You may be seated, ICB. It's great to see everyone today. Even with a marathon, you made it. <laughs> Some are messaging saying, I'm not going to make it. I'll see you next week. <laughs> got to love the marathons of Barcelona. Hey, it's great to be together today. Brandy sends her love. She'll be back with us next week. She's been, yeah, I know, I miss her too. <laughs> Trust me. Dad with three kids is beautiful for like a day. But uh, she says, tell everybody I love them, so she loves you. She also said, don't forget to tell them about Real. Yeah, Real is coming up. You'll hear about the announcement later. Make sure you sign up, be there. We've got Bianca Oltoff coming, and Kemi Olieso from Jubilee Church in London will be with us. It's going to be a great time connecting uh, with our women's conference. So make sure you sign up. Ladies, gentlemen, if you have kids, you're on to watch those kids. If you don't have kids, you can watch mine. Just kidding. <laughs> but seriously, it's going to be an amazing time together. Also, don't forget, we've been in a series that we just ended on generosity and stewardship. And you know, we're coming into this season of our capital campaign, of our building that's coming up. And so I told you to be praying about asking God what he's asking you to do as a part of that. In two weeks' time, we're going to be talking more about that and all of us together joining to see what God will do and call us into as we trust him for the future and we build the future together. So be continually praying about that. Uh, today we have a joy to have with us some dear friends, Michael and Valerie Murphy. They're here with us all the way from Australia. I cannot do, yeah, come on. I can't do an Australian accent. I do other accents, but not Australian. But my daughter, Bella, she's 13, she said, oh, I'm so excited. I love the Australian accent, Dad. I said, well, you're in luck today. They've got great accents and even a greater word. So uh, Michael and Valerie are dear friends. We met them first in Israel years ago. Uh, they've been friends and champions of ICB, of pastors around the world, working on staff at Hillsong in the early years, then planting their own church, Shire Church, and that's now Hill, uh, Horizon Church, and uh, pastoring a lovely community of faith that's been making a difference for years and years there in Australia. And, and then they decided, it's time to retire. Not really, it's time to transition. They said, what does that look like? And they decided, you know what, let's travel the world and pour into leaders and pastors and churches to make a difference even more so for years and years they've been pouring into leaders and developing people who will reach the world for Jesus. So it's a true honor to have you guys with us today. Thanks for being here, taking the time out of your schedule to come and uh, love on us. So they are friends of the church, they're friends of our church and friends of ours. So put your hands together as Michael comes and shares today with us, we love you. Hey, ICB, how are you doing? You good? I'll talk a little bit just so that you can get used to. I normally bring my Australian interpreter up here. Uh, hopefully you can understand what I am saying. And uh, hey, listen, if you are watching, if you're part of our online family, a big welcome to you. Come on, those in the room, why don't we give a welcome to those that are gonna watch online. And uh, we, I, we're just so delighted to be here. Um, we, as, as uh, Pastor John said, we met several years ago in Israel. And uh, we, were, we, had, we were leading a, a bus trip and, uh, and along with a bunch of other incredible leaders, uh, they were on the trip and we had a, had a blast. We had an amazing time. And uh, I was saying to Jim on the way here, I said, instantly we connected and he, he made the comment, he said, well, who doesn't connect with them? And it's absolutely true. How many love your pastors? Yeah. Like seriously, we get the privilege of, of being with um, hundreds of churches around the world, hundreds of lead pastors. And, uh, and when God was selecting a lead pastor for you, I think, I think he showed you a little bit of extra favour. And here's why, here's why. I, I, I believe that, that it's great to have a leader who is a visionary leader. There, how many know there's more vision in Pastor John than you need to sink a battleship, right? So we've got no problem there. But also pastors that genuinely love God and love people. Been lots and lots said about lead pastors and maybe you've been you know, off the radar a little bit with that around the world. And you often hear about just a couple that have had real difficulties. But I want you to know, 
we love this couple and we absolutely are excited about what's already happened. But we're actually even more excited about what is still yet to happen. And I, I, I honestly don't believe that, that Barcelona in contemporary history has seen what God wants to do through IC, ICB. I, I really believe that. I really believe that. So we are delighted to be here. My, my bride, my beautiful wife, uh, we are celebrating our 39th wedding anniversary about a week ago. Hey, honey, come up and, come up and sing a song. I will not be singing a song. Let me just tell you that right now. But it's great to be here. Thank you for being so welcoming. And we love your city. First time in Spain. And we are delighted to be here. Thank you so much for making us so welcome. God bless you. You're so pretty. You're so pretty. So I want to talk to you today about something that weaves in, I think, some of the things that have already been going on in the house. Um, you're about to make, at some stage, a significant uh, shift from being temporary, kind of portable, to a permanent facility. And uh, I'm not going to say too much about that. Your pastor has uh, amply shared about that. But, but I do want to talk, the title of my message, if you're looking for one, is The Power of a Tree. The Power of a Tree. You might have seen the quote it's running around at the moment that says something like, a society can be measured in its health by the fact that old guys plant trees under whose shade they will never sit. When you plant a tree, you are instinctively thinking generationally. And this is not a, this is not a conservation message or a green message this morning, but, but the reality is that, that there's something about that. The kingdom of God, we just, we, we just went to uh, um, uh, the, the cathedral, uh, Sagrada Familia, and, uh, and Sagrada Familia, and, and it, it just, it reeks of generational um, uh, blessing, really. Uh, I, I've been to, I don't know, 100 cathedrals in my life, and I thought, well, you know, one cathedral, surely seen one, seen them all, oh, No. Oh no, and I just I just think that it, there's something distinct about that. Something distinct about, you know, they call him God's architect, but just in terms of starting a work, knowing, knowing that you would never fulfill the thing that has been in your heart. The Bible's full of men and women of God that did just that. Hebrews 11, the Hall of Faith, it talks about the fact that they, they all did what they did by faith. Everyone say, by faith. They did it by faith and they never saw the fulfilment of that promise. But by faith, they understood that they were part of a longer relay. Today, you are making a real sacrifice. I know many of you wanted to line up in the marathon, but you said, no, I'm going to put the kingdom of God first. Pastor John, it was everything to hold him back from that starting line, right? He was ready to go. I said, Pastor John, you've got to come. He said, why do I have to come to church? He said, I said, you're the pastor. But it was just a single race. It wasn't a relay, but in the kingdom, we run a relay. We've, we've all got heritage. We've all got, we've all got stuff in our past. I'll share a little bit of our stuff. How many would like to hear about a bit of our stuff and what Jesus has saved us from? And uh, we've, we've, all got, we've all got situations that could, if you like, if you wanted to, hold you bound. Uh, my, my, my dad, who passed away at the start of this year at 91, when I was born, he was a funeral director. Like I, I nearly wore a black top hat and a black suit just to, you know, just to bless my dad. But he... But he, he was a, in fact, the very first house that I lived in was the first floor above a funeral parlour. We didn't have a lot of money, so they just got a coffin and put a mattress in it. That was my first bed. No, no, not really, not really. <laughs> but one, one day I was, I was hooning down the backyard on my, on my little scooter and I got out of control. Maybe I was about three or four, and, uh, maybe four, and, and smashed my chin 
on the fence at the back. Thank you for your sympathy, Claire. I saw the wince there. So beautiful, full of empathy. Blood went everywhere. And so they were looking around for a car to take me to hospital. The only one they could find, you're getting ahead of me right there, was a hearse. So I turned up with a little cut of my chin in a hearse. Not all that faith building for a young guy with a cut chin. So I had death and dying around me most of my uh, life. And, uh, you know, sometimes we would have to, you know, dad tells a story or mum, actually mum told the story. Dad, when he was a funeral director, uh, you'd also have to go and, and this is a great way to start Sunday morning, isn't it? And uh, uh, someone had passed away and he went to the nursing home and uh, the nurse, dad said, you know, was there with one of his helpers and, and where is he? And, uh, and the guy just sat in the room there and he came to a guy and his feet were uncovered. And so dad grabbed the guy's feet and he went, ah, it was the wrong guy. So don't look too dead this morning. You might get carted out of here. Um, but, uh, but it's a different thing just to know about stuff, to know about the fact that this life is finite, is finite. And, uh, but, but, but when you have a, a near-death experience, it does put a different spin on that. You realise, I won't do a hand show, but, but there's probably stacks of us here that have just one centimetre. We're metric here, aren't we? Just wanted to check. I'm, I'm metric in everything but height. Can't get the whole thing. Um, so so, so there's, there's, there's a sense in which that if, if just a centimetre or a split second, and you might have left the planet. I'm sure you've all got, a, most of you've got a story. I remember there was a time, my very first missions trip in the Philippines and we, that we were working really hard and it was like, seemed like 110 degrees and dripping with humidity. And so they gave us one afternoon off. And so I went for a swim, went back and had a siesta. Gotta love siesta. And, uh, and so, and then I threw my board shorts in the corner I've learnt a lot better since then. I don't throw my clothes on the floor or anything like that. And, uh, and, so, and so while I was asleep, there was a knock at the door. I got up and I realised I was about to open the door in no fit state to welcome a stranger. And so I quickly grabbed my board shorts. What I didn't know is a scorpion had crawled into my shorts and stung me at the top of the leg. All the guys, phew. Okay, so, so, so. So I was, I was out of it for the next day or two, just, just recovering from this scorpion sting. My wife, we were in a, what was it, 20th anniversary or 10th? 20th anniversary, we were out on a, a tropical island, uh, Vanuatu or Tahiti. And, uh, and, and we're, we're swimming in the afternoon in the shallows and Valerie goes, ow! And, and, and there was blood in the water. Turned out she dragged her foot over a deadly stonefish. So, so near-death near experiences, near-death experiences can remind us of the fact that the life you're living, though it be eternal with Jesus, and we'll talk about that a little bit later on. In fact, at the end of the message, I am gonna be absolutely delighted to take a minute to pray for every single person here and those of our online family who would say, you know what, Michael, I, I'm bumping along the bottom spiritually. I just, I just, I, 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 I've lost something in God. Or maybe you've never ever consciously got your life right with Jesus Christ. I remember there was a time, if I, if I, if I go back a bit, uh, yeah, let me tell you. So when I was 14, I was brought up in a Catholic background. I was an altar boy and, you know, can make the sign of the cross with the best of them. And, uh, and, and I remember at a four, as a 14-year-old, there was a, 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 an adult male, not a priest, who, who sexually abused me when I was 14. And, you know, it's a tender age, right? And so I'm like, ah. Oh. And so I thought, I'm not going to tell anyone. And I decided to prove my heterosexuality by frankly sleeping around with whomever I could, as soon as I could. And that was in and out of relationships. 
and to be honest, hurt a lot of people in the process. Ladies, I'm, I'm ashamed about it, but I, I was that guy. I was that guy out of my own brokenness. And, and I was that guy that hurt someone like you. And, and thank God for his grace. And I pray that over your life as well. In fact, this is not in my notes. Um, for those that of you that have been hurt by a, by a man that, that did not treat you the way you deserve to be treated, you don't know me, but can I just say I'm sorry? Jesus is here right now. Even as I said that, the Holy Spirit, there's a, there's a healing balm. There's a healing balm. Ended up with a teenage pregnancy. I, I, myself and the girl had been going out for 18 months or so. I dropped out of commerce law at university and we decided we'll get married. And uh, we're both 18. And I uh, raised a fair bit of money, got three jobs to get married. And that relationship fell badly apart. And I'll get to the word in a minute, I promise. I'm just, I just want to give you a bit of a background as, as, as to what, what brings us to the pulpit. We, we, when I realized the brokenness that was, I'm, it's, I'm acutely aware of this, the beautiful grace of God. And so that she married someone, the girl married someone, friend of the family, a little bit older than her, and he raised the child. I never saw the baby. And then I actually then binged the money that we'd raised, and I was out of it for maybe two or three months and uh, nearly got killed a couple of times, including a a VW car that I flipped on its, on its roof. And I should have been killed, but had a little, little scratch on, on, the, on the back of my shoulder. Um, and it was soon after that that I actually gave my life to Christ. Met my beautiful wife, Valerie. We got married, had our kids. We were sent out by uh, Pastor Brian of Hillsong, and we took over a church on the other side of Sydney. Um, I was preaching one Sunday night, and uh, a couple of people responded. One of them came up to me afterwards and said, can I talk to you for a minute? I said, sure. Uh, this beautiful 18-year-old girl looked at me in the eyes and said, I'm your daughter. First time I'd ever laid eyes on her. And I tell you, my daddy's heart nearly pounded out of my chest. Just like your heavenly father. In fact, a tinge compared to what your heavenly father feels when you do just that. Proverbs chapter 13 Verse 22 says, a good man. Everyone say a good man. Good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children, but the wealth of the sinner is stored up for the righteous. There are sliding doors moments in our lives where God gives us a glimpse of the impact of our current decisions and current journey. If you want a reflection question, Today, uh, it's simply this. What could you do or shift that your kids and grandkids would be grateful for down the road? What is it right now that you're flirting with? What is it right now, right now that you're neglecting that are actually causing you to bump along the bottom so that you're going to give a bump along the bottom kind of example to those that will follow you? God's heart is that we might be those people, you know, those sliding doors. If you look back even generationally, there are all of us have sliding doors moments in our lives. I love what Paul says to the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 15. It says, though you have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet you do not have many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I have begotten you through the gospel. I thank God you've got a father in the faith here who genuinely cares for this city, for the nation, but also for every single one of you. It's not very cool these days to talk about fatherhood and so forth, but the Bible's pretty clear that, that we, we need parents in the faith and we've got a responsibility to run with what they give us. And that's what I say in this generation right now, they're... they're you have, you have a unique opportunity that is like a blank canvas that's never been painted on before. And that is the opportunity to step up 
and actually sow a seed that's going to be a blessing for generations. That's a bit of my story. My, my beautiful wife, she was married as a younger girl and she was a flight attendant and she, she, she planted a little sapling tree and her husband walked out after a couple of years with someone else. She didn't even know where he was for, for several months. And she planted this tree in the afternoon. She would water that tree and she would cry and it was kind of cathartic. And uh, as I said, I, I came to Christ. We got married and, and, and many years later, about 40 years later, we were driving up in that area where she used to live. And uh, I said, do you want to go back and check out where you used to, used to have a house? And she said, sure, let's do it. Didn't know the actual address, knew the street. We turned around the corner and here's this little sapling that Valerie, Valerie planted through her tears has now this great tree that was shielding not only her property, but a property on either side. I want you to know, friends, this morning that your future never be, need be dictated to by the circumstances and mistakes of your past when you put it in the hands of Jesus. Does that make sense? God's heart is to take you as an individual, lover of Jesus, and, and cause the seed of your faith to go on from generation to to generation, to generation. Let me give you a couple of quick thoughts on what I think is really important. You know, we go back to the book of Genesis and uh, the tree that they were not allowed to touch was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. God said, that's my domain. God says, I really want you to maintain a high view of Scripture. So, so you say, what's a high view of Scripture? The fact that the Word of God is the final authority on everything, on what is right, what is wrong, on what, what the direction of our lives. And here's what's happened in the generation that we're in right now. The Word of God has been denigrated to such a, it hasn't been totally wiped out, but it's kind of now down in the realm of the morass of sociological re-engineering ideas. And so we take a little bit of the Word, a little, little bit of Instagram, a little bit of Twitter, a little bit of social commentators, a little bit of those with a FUD. You say FUD, yeah, PhD. And I'm not, I'm not against higher education. I, 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 I have the privilege of being chair of a university in Australia. In fact, the only evangelical spirit-filled Christian university in our nation. And so don't, don't, get, don't hear what I'm not saying. Higher education is important, but, but don't, don't listen to someone because they've got a doctorate in that amount of information and think they're an expert in everything. Stuff that's untried, stuff that's unresearched, stuff that's not followed through generationally. And I want you to know that God is saying this morning, the power of my Word still remains. And so as you come to the Word of God, and let me, let me talk to you just for a moment as, as a dad. When you come to the Word of God, don't just snack. If this is the Word of truth, don't just, oh, busy God. Don't just grab a croissant of a verse on the way out and take a hunk out of it with your coffee. Take some time. This is, this is the Word of the living God. It's not just a manual to, for, for living. It's not just a whole lot of good ideas. And so... Understand the power of God's Word lives today. In fact, the only source of your faith, it's a gift from God, but building your faith, the Bible says in, in Romans, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. One of the reasons we're miserable Christians sometimes is we've lacked the input. That would be just one thought. If, if right now it's difficult, and it's not a challenge, it's not, sorry, it's not a, a condemnatory thing. We don't know each other that well. But God's, God's heart is that he, you might open your heart and open your life and mix the word with faith. God said, right in the book of Genesis, let there be light, 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 light. And that same word continues to give us the light today. That same word continues to bring transformation to your heart and your life. Secondly, in, 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 in Genesis chapter 2, verse 9, the, the Scripture talks about the trees in the garden. 
and, and, and observes this. It says, the trees were beautiful to behold and good for food. Beautiful and good for food. When Eve, in the next chapter, referred to that same thing, she flipped the order. She said, oh, it's good for food and it's beautiful to behold. You say, what's the difference? God's order in, in, in Scripture is very, very important. The first, the first time where the, the Word of God's referring to the trees, it says, it says, beauty comes before action. Worship, beautiful to behold, becomes before work. Consecration comes before consumption. That's, that's the difficulty sometimes when we, when, we, when, when we misplace our efforts and we, and we lose sight of the awesomeness of God, then, then that'll do something. You want a change, you want a behavioral change? Have a beholding change. As you behold him, you will behave like him. You can try and sweat and try and do it all your own strength, but it actually won't work. Uh, finally, the price of our worth. In Genesis chapter one and verse 26, it says, God said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness, so they may rule over the fish of the sea, the birds in the air, over the livestock and all the, all the animals. So God created mankind in his image. He repeats it again, in the image of God created he them. You see, your worth is so rooted in Christ. And, and, and for, for Valerie and I, one of the biggest challenges has been getting over the shame of, of the brokenness and the mistakes that we've made. Even, even having walked with God for nearly 38 years. And so I want to really encourage you that that, that, that shame is not your portion. The Bible says there is no condemnation, Romans 8, to those that are in Christ Jesus. You know, you go back to Luke chapter 15 and we see a father that, whose son had squandered the inheritance. Again, Proverbs 13, it says, a good man lays up an inheritance for his children's children. And so, and so this father, the son had come and said, hey, pops, I want my inheritance, which is akin to saying, I want you dead. And so the son took the inheritance. Dad probably needed to sell a parcel of land. He probably didn't have it under the mattress. And so the kid went and started squandering it, partaying all over Gentile territory. And while the money was flowing and the Prosecco was flowing and the party music was happening, he had heaps of friends. And when it all dried up, the friend split. And then, and then the dad did an unusual thing. The kid finally turned, came to his senses, turned his head for home and, and, and dad saw him and dad starts to run. He would have had to gird up his dressing gown, tuck it into his robes and he starts to run. That was an unheard of thing. Dad was prepared to trash his reputation, that shame be upon him in order to reach his boy. You say, why did he do that? Well, obviously he loved his son. He loved his son. But there was another reason the commentators now agree that when a son trashed the inheritance, we're talking about the power of a tree, generational blessing, the, the elders of the village would run out and they'd surround the boy before he got a chance to get home. And they would say, you have trashed your father's inheritance. You have done it amongst Gentiles. Shame on you. They'd take a pot and they'd smash it. And they would say, the shards of shame be on your head. You are cut off from us. He said, that's one loving dad. We got another loving dad in heaven that did the same thing. He sent his son running to a cross 
so that he could undercut the enemy shame ceremony over you. And rather than indulging in shame on you, the Word of the living God says to you today, shame off you in Jesus' Name. Shame off you in Jesus' Name. You are not to impart the shame. You are to stand in the worth of Christ that will resound for generations to come. Two final thoughts and then I'm gonna pray like I said I would. I lost a friend, good friend, 52 he was, started this year. And uh, I was in church, he's, he was one of the campus pastors at River Valley. I know we've got a great relationship here. And uh, he grew a campus from zero to I think 1100 or something in a bunch of years. And he, he dropped dead instantly. And so we, Valerie and I raced up there, had time with the congregation. Pastor Rob said, can you talk to them? Bit of a fatherly chat during worship. I got this image. They were singing a song that you might be familiar. It's called Hallways. It says, Lord, remind me that this is not my home. Life is a hallway. This is not my destination. And I got a picture of Anthony, my friend, uh, coming to these big hunking or like medieval doors in a, in a long hallway. And as he took his last breath on earth, the doors flung open. The radiance of the light nearly knocked him off his feet and he took the next breath, which was the atmosphere of heaven. See, Anthony thought he was way down the end of that hallway when in fact his nose was pressed up against the doors that were about to unfold to eternity. We never know where we are. And I just sense there's a, a door with a little crack in it that some of you need to lean on today. Ah, you can stay where you are. You can continue to bump along. You can continue to, that, to be that kind of person that's, oh, you know, I'm kind of in half. But you can have a sliding doors moment where the Spirit of the living God wants to rise up afresh within you today. That's what I want to do some business with God about right now. In a moment, I'm going to get you to close your eyes and I'm going to simply count to three. When I hit three, everyone here that says, Michael, you know what? That's where I'm at. I'm distant from God. I've been bumping along the bottom. I've been just going through the motions. And friend, I want you to know God has got so much more for you than that. So much more. But it starts, He's done the work. It starts with you humbling your heart and saying, God, I don't wanna, I don't wanna just stay going through the motions. God, I wanna open my heart up to all that you have for me. Can I get you to close your eyes right across the house? And even, even those that are online right now, unless you're driving a car, don't close your eyes. Let God be God in your life. Here we go. One, Jesus Christ died that you might have life. He took the punishment, the full punishment of God's wrath for your sin, your shame, your sickness. Two, the Bible says that today is the day of salvation. When you hear His voice, don't, don't diss Him, don't harden your heart. Come on, but respond to Him. With every eye closed and every head bowed, right across the congregation and also online, you say, Michael, that's me. I, I need you to pray for me. I, I need you to include me in this prayer. I need to get my life right with God. I've got to come back into that sweet spot that I know God wants me to dwell. If that's you right now, with every eye closed, every head bowed right across the house, you say, Michael, pray for me. Include me in this prayer. If that's you right now. Lift your hand up. Three, right across the house. God bless you. Yes, 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 yes. God bless you there. I see that hand. Who else, if that's you, you haven't raised your hand, but you want to. Just lift it up confidently and boldly, long enough and high enough for me to see it. And then you can put it down again. God bless you. Can we pray this prayer together? Dear Heavenly Father, come on, dear Heavenly Father, I come to You right now in the Name of Your Son, Jesus. I acknowledge my need of You. From my heart with my mouth, I confess that You are my Saviour and my Lord. I receive the forgiveness 
that flows from the finished work of the cross. And I express faith in that right now. In Jesus' Name, come on, Amen and Amen. Can we thank God for each one of those people? I want you to take a moment just as we head in just a moment of worship or whatever's gonna happen next. What's one thing? How are you doing with the Word? Like really, like just us. How are you doing with the Word? That, that can be a real priority. Don't, don't, don't think, oh, I, I struggle with that. Well, don't we all? There's enough, trend, enough distractions. What about worship? What about on a daily morning basis? Just, just play one song. Play Waymaker. Play Waymaker. I think, is it Bethel who got a new version out that's just kind of a bit unplugged? He's working, friends. What would that do to your day? Just to meditate on, oh God, as I go into this new day. And what about your worth? Do you carry a burden of shame? Do you carry a burden of condemnation? Shame off you. I promise you, your kids your grandkids and those after them will rise up and call you blessed. The power of a tree, plant something that'll last way beyond you. Amen. Amen. Thank you for receiving the word this morning. God bless you.